So all of our basic settling is just to settle down to a little better level or to settle down to that brain. He's better. Uh, maybe we do the same thing if we're tighter in the upper brain and just sort of getting running around a lot, a little crazy, uh, too much stuff and you're going crazy here. Easy, settle, and you settle, give yourself a little more room, and you're playing in here. So we do a similar thing to settle down a crazy brain, okay? Or uh, too much is going on. I can't quote. Easy, easy. So that would be part of it, following the same pattern, okay? But tonight I want to work with settling into a feeling brain. So would you play the game with me that there's a brain here someplace, okay? Feeling brain. And I was talking to Brad right before, and he says, is that like core? It, yeah, but I want to change the words around because bodybuilders use the word core. To them, it's a grouping of muscles. Uh, like, yeah, fine. But I want to go past that. So, uh, I have used core, but I don't want to use it tonight. I want to use a brain. Okay. What should we, let's do something physical. Uh, let's see. Do I need you here? Probably. Oh, ah. Oh, ah. 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 Okay. So I step, she steps. So it's body feeling, okay? So I say, catch, catch, uh, settle down. There's a brain here, and its area of influence is body feeling. Okay, I think for some reason or other, that felt better again. Now, because it's going to jump up and think about why it was better. So there's a tendency to go back to that brain, yeah? Okay, easy, easy. That brain, brain. And that was even better. Again, I said to her, oh, even better. Bing, a message is being sent to this brain. It's trying to register it. Okay, don't waste your time. Come back here, all right? After a while, you let the message go, but you won't go with the message. We talked about that, I don't know, a week or two ago. Uh, a message is sent. I think I used the example of uh, like a book, a book in the library, and they make a uh, filing card, index card about the book. But an index card about the book is not the book. <laughs> so you learn not to waste your time going there, okay? And then you settle. There's a brain. Play the game. The brain and it naturally has a sphere of influence. Ooh, good, good. Uh, as this body sphere of influence, uh, it's getting better. Okay, so as as this comes more alive, the body feeling sphere of influence gets better. Uh, even to the point now where she's sucking me in. Uh, there's really a kind of a that's hardly stopped here. I'm being sucked in more. So that's a good sign. Okay. Um, get out. I'm finished with you. But uh, people, the Zoomers, I hope you have room to do one step because we're going to do this. Yeah, over here. Over there, camera. Got to check it. Say, okay. All right. Now, standing, can you, and where you can see your your uh, set, uh, your screen, uh, left foot forward, we'll just do one side. And as I step in, do what Katya did, step back. Okay, that's the game. Easy, settle, settle. There's a brain, settle, easy. There's a brain that will start to come more and more alive and affect the sphere of influence. Easy, okay? And there I am, there you are. Okay? 
Easy. See, a lot of information has been sent up here. Uh, don't go there. Easy. Easy. Go ahead, touch that brain again. So it starts to come more alive and the sphere of influence improves. Easy. Let me think about that. Stop it. <laughs> I don't want to work this brain. This brain. Feeling brain. Ready? I felt pretty good. I think you all, as a group, moved better. I can sense, feel that. Uh, can't prove it because you're way over there and I'm here, but there was something a little bit different there. I'm sure it was you guys, not just me. Oh. Left foot forward. Easy. As this brain activates, oh, fear of influence, and I move, you move. Okay. If you're still being startled, startled means, oh my God, he moved. If you're still being startled, uh, we're not quite there yet. Okay. Uh, the first brain would get startled. But the movement, body movement, body feeling, beginning to feel the situation of a body moving uh, where I want to go. And again, left foot forward for you. Easy, brain coming alive, um, feel fear of influence. I move, you move, okay. Last one, easy, settle down. I move, you move. Okay. Uh, How would you do with that? Maybe we should open mic for a moment. I know it was short. Anybody get anything out of that? Please just speak up if you'd like to talk. Anybody? Anybody get anything out of that? I'm on this camera show. Yes, yeah, Sensei. Um, I, I definitely felt the connection and it just wasn't looking at you. It was getting a feeling sense of centering and a feeling sense of, of your energy. And it yeah. worked really well. It worked really well in, in this Zooming format, I thought. Uh, yeah, you at a better level, uh, this wouldn't be something you see. This would become something you're actually feeling. You would actually feel uh, the pre of my movement and stuff like, like that. So I think that was Tom. Tom's starting to pick that, that up. He's starting to actually kind of feel my movement. Uh, so we could see distance. As though Sensei said, there is no time or space for Uchiba Vaikido. Also, as we settle down, our spatial thing changes. So after a while, it doesn't matter if you're in New Zealand. You ought to be able to sense feel that coming in from, from me, okay? So we could bridge those gaps, especially as we get advanced. Ah, okay, Kaki, you coming down? Oh my God, no. <laughs> ah, all right here? Yeah. Okay. Um, Yeah. <laughs> Catch running over there. Me. <laughs> okay. Fire alarm was uh, starting to squeak when battery goes dead, so we have to fix that. Oh. Now, so this is when we do our basic, uh, basic moves in Aikido. I'm just trying to get you to that brain. Another day we might call it that level. Another day we could call it a better uh, a better sense of centering. Okay, let's call it brain today. Uh, let me go over the old patterns. Catch a new boy. So old patterns would be uh, Okay. 
and she feels the graph. Okay. Easy, settle, feel, feel. Okay. Begin to move if you want. Easy. And then she begins to move a bit. Okay. Good. Uh, what was good also was not, she didn't yank me back from her shoulder, which would have been more an idea of doing something. If she yanked me back with her shoulder, I figure she's still in that upper brain, trying to head into the feeling brain. But if it's too much shoulder pull, then I say, ah, oh, too much hair yet. And we continue, easy, meaning settle. Easy, you settle down to this brain and this brain. Okay, easy, easy, settle down to that brain. Oh, that was better. And uh, I like to be a good partner. So what I do is I come in with exactly the same amount of energy. So any variations are her. If you got a screwy partner, he'll play games with you and then come in and say, you ain't going anywhere, bitch or lady. Uh, and screw you up. We've got to work in harmony. Uh, is that what we call it in Aikido? Train harmoniously. We're not tanking for each other, but I want you to get to this brain. You as my partner want me to get to, to this brain. As we're both operating from this brain, we'll, we'll get, whoa, we'll get good feedback as to how things work. I'm not tanking. We're both trying to develop together. He's doing brain, body, feeling, receptive. I'm doing brain, body, feeling, positive. <laughs> and then after a while, she started to pick up even the before of it and be moving with me uh, uh, much earlier. <laughs> For example. And you feel, and she, oh, nice. I like her in the flow. That tells me she was feeling. She wasn't just trying to pull me, which would have brought in her tricep and her shoulder, whatever, whatever. But I, I knew what my flow was because I have fairly good body feeling. And when she's in my flow, good, good. At a certain level, should be so, okay? Well, we're actually experiencing uh, when she's in my flow and also my flow. Oh, yeah, that was my flow. So I get a little feedback as to my flow because without working, she just picked it up and moved it. Very nice. Okay? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we'll come back to something. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, so all of our early basics in Aikido, at least the way I present it, uh, or what I'm trying to do, is uh, just try to get you to shift to this feeling brain, which its a sphere of influence is your body moving. And then with a the partner, your body moving with that other body. Okay. If we stay with an idea too much of I'm doing a martial art, I got to get this guy and work him, uh, then we're not playing the game that I want to play. I want to play being at a better level and things should happen better. Okay. Um, where are we so far? So that brain settles down. Okay, the uh, way of moving to another brain we use all those uh, calm related words. Calm in this case is not, I'm nervous, I'm gonna be calm. I'm not talking about uh, that calm, that calm. I'm talking about calmness, okay? Uh, that it can be used as a travel vehicle as there is a flavor of calmness. I get to a little better level, and from that level, I am at that level, and I activate, or the character comes alive there, okay? So one way of moving from brain to brain 
is to settle. These are words that are calm related. Out of calm comes all these words. Settle. Hush. Easy. Okay. Clear. Boom. There'll be another level. You'll be at another brain level, if you would. Okay. Uh, remember, this brain wants to figure everything. This upper brain wants to figure everything out. Uh, I got to learn it so I can do it. And it's like, if you're not in a feeling brain, you don't do feeling stuff very well. You can talk a lot about it. You're intelligent about it. God forbid you're a, uh, give me a better word, intellectual about it. That's very nice. Those are all nice aspects of that brain. But not here. Uh, if you intellectualize with me on the mat, I'm going to run your butt over. You know that. It's a beautiful thing that you're so smart. I'll tap you after class when I have a problem about something else. Okay. But in movement and doing what we do on the mat, uh, don't use those. I see. But again, I think we're very used to using those. Using that brain got you through high school, got you through college, and you're kind of smart with your peers. Fine. Uh, so I'm not denouncing it. I'm just saying, not now. Not now. All right. So let's see. Quick story. Uh, uh, talking about a feeling, sensing brain here. So I'm at SLN. I'm having my coffee in the dining room. And a couple come up to me. And they want to ask me about their relationship. They have a sense that they have a past life connection. And they sort of mention that as starters. And the first thing I hear in my head is, I don't know. Okay, which is not an unusual form for me. I don't know. Why are they bugging me? And then I, easy. Because part of my job at Islin, I always felt was to make myself available. So if people had problems, questions, whatever, I was there for them. I always figured that was part of my being there, other than teaching my workshop. Uh, so I don't know. Of course I don't know. And as I begin to settle, I start to move. I'm pretty quick now. I, or even then, I start to move into more sense feeling brain eventually here a sensing brain and i begin to feel this past life story unfolding in front of me start to get imagery and stuff uh but see the first brain's kind of smart is that i don't know <laughs> a lot of other people may have tried to stay in that brain and say oh gee i don't know let me look at you two and and, and let me figure this out and and no not for being sensitive i hate the word psychic psychic to their past life relationship. That's a whole different brain with a whole different sphere of influence. Okay. So uh, I'm not bitching about your brain or if you're an intellectual. I only bitch at you on the map because I don't want you to use that brain. You're not going to get anywhere with that brain. Okay. By the time you figure it out, you're too slow. You're too slow. Because you're on me, figure this out so I can do it. That's it. I just ran your ass over twice. Okay. Where are we up to this point? Uh, two brains. Feeling brain. So if you take all of your practices and any physical practice, uh, you can play with that one, settle down. And feel. You can, you can uh, shadow box. You can Tai Chi your Aikido moves. Okay, the hairs are starting to grab me. I'm going to kick back, grab them, return. Easy. Settle down. Feel. After a while, with that feeling brain, by the way, the invisible partner, he gets much clearer. It's not a figment of your imagination. That way, you actually begin to see him. You actually begin to feel him. Your partner really takes on some kind of substance here. Uh, and you can practice with your uh, invisible partner. Okay? 
I think, you know, Sensei said he had one for a while. I think it was in the old Lama World War II times because nobody trained with that time. Uh, but I, it, it, I believe he said he had an invisible partner. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so if you can establish an invisible partner, actual, you can, you can practice. You don't have to be in a dojo with another person. Uh, you know your basics for those that know their basic. Oh, he's showmanning me. Oh, okay. Boom, boom, boom. And I feel that I was a little forward and a, not, and a little shallow. Okay, easy, settle. This brain comes more alive, fuller body feeling. Whoa, that was better. I noticed I had a, a better ground and I felt a little bit fuller. Okay, uh, enough thinking, stop. Back to brain coming more alive. Making those words up, coming more alive, and the sphere of influence. Here he comes on the showman. I feel like I really preempted him. Like before he could really get going, I was already there. I felt confident. Uh, so, any of your basic techniques you can practice. Okay. Just learn how to allow an invisible partner to be in play. Okay. Um, all so, oh, Tai Chi moves, uh, they don't teach it that way much anymore because it's an exercise now, but really Tai Chi is a fighting form. Uh, uh, they teach it as an exercise now, it's a tad different. But all those moves are, he's punching and I'm blocking and I'm retorting. And now I'm da 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 and I'm doing that to him. And now here comes this guy and he's being swept in. And, and they're all based on a shadow boxing. Okay, all right. So uh, if you want to train, find your invisible partner and train. Okay, all right. Uh, this class uh, is not an entertainment class, so I, I'm a little leery of how many techniques you know on the show. You want to see techniques? You know, there must be. I'll say a million must be a hell of a lot of videos out there or DVD things, whatever they call all that, on Aikido, where good teachers were being filmed to sell you their product. There's so many out there, so many teachers. You want to watch techniques? Go buy some film and watch. And watch it again and again and again. So you can see what other people can't see. Uh, so I, I don't know, to repeat certain basics over and over for us, uh, for me is a little, really? I can do that, okay? Uh, a bit to stay in line with what we're di dialing. Is that, is that okay? That, I didn't say anything bad to upset you, did I? I'm checking with Katya. Katya gave me the okay. If Katya gives me the okay, it's really okay. If she's not that easy. Ah, uh, somebody, let's go open mic. Oh, somebody sensei, this, say something here. Where sensei, are we? this is Lauren. And Hi. I understand the difference between the thinking mind and the feeling mind. <laughs> what, by using you my thinking understand. mind. I'm sorry, Lauren, I'm all over you here. I yes, know. I know you understand. Yes. No, no, damn it. How do we operate from here? Now, please, I cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> from feeling mind to sensing mind. From the feeling brain to the sensing brain. That shift. Again, uh, a trick, easy and subtle, or use the calmness as a travel vehicle. You calm down. Kind of a type of, it's a downtime. Down. And in that, Curtain of of uh, calm, curtain of calm in my bad, curtain of calm. Then usually you touch a little better level, and you start to come alive at that level, and that would be the beginnings of a sensing brain coming alive, having a sphere of in influence. Okay, so far are we, are we, are we okay with that? Yes. And I don't know, maybe not to expect too much that fast. See, my problem is sometimes I'm fast at some of this stuff. 
because I've done it over and over and whatever. Uh, but remember the percentage game. If you settle down and say, okay, easy call, sensing brain, sensing brain. And already this one's starting to jump in. Am I sensing anything yet? Stop it. Again, settle down, sensing brain. Okay, there's a little something there. I sort of felt the area of the room. Don't know how to say it well, but I, I felt, sense felt the room. Okay, I knew I wasn't in a closet. How about that? I, I could feel there was more room. Okay, in a pitch dark room at this level, I would feel there's not a wall here. I've got room, a little bit of room. Okay. Anyway, a uh, percentage game. Then as I continue repeating that, the percentage will be more percentage of uh, sensing brain and the area that it covers the sphere of influence. Uh, so I don't just do one and say, well, am I, am I sensitive yet or, <laughs> okay. Uh, but you play, you play. You do something dumb over and over and over till it starts to get clear that there is something going on. Then you do something equally dumb over here to see <laughs> where something goes on. So I used to play a lot of dumb games over and over just to be able to feel these transitions and figure out what transitions were. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me go back for a moment. Uh, Lauren, are we okay so far? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Chinese teacher, uh, no, a year on. Uh, I don't remember, but anyway, this is the top of the line, a Chinese fighter Tai Chi teacher. And I think you told me, Trudin uh, has told you that this guy, like a hundred times a day, would tell his people, easy? No? You're with That's me? right. Can you hear me, Sensei? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. I didn't see yes. your mouth move is all. Sorry, yes, you're correct. Uh, okay, see, see what he was doing, probably. As his students were practicing, they'd get insights, of course. They'd have an experience and they'd feel it, at which time, bing, message is being shot up here. And he could apparently see that and he'd say, hey, guys, clear. Clear, I don't want you up here thinking about what you just did, clear, and we'll continue to a better placement with whatever level you're at and its sphere of influence. And as you get to a better level sphere of influence, boom, there'll probably be another insight because it's a little bit different. Bing! Clear, guys. <laughs> so a hundred times a day, he's telling these people clear. So that's how I would take it, what he was trying to get, get across, that he yes, didn't want right. them to. It caught up there. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, somebody, where where are we? What's going on? Sensei, it's Mike from New Zealand. Yeah. I was just to say, I think an awful lot of people in the beginning, certainly when learning Aikido, they only believe there is one one brain, one mind to yeah. operate from. There's no yeah. understanding of, of there being more. Of course, of course, of course. Okay. So we have to develop, and I've tried to do my best here, uh, develop these introductory, simple moves. Oh, here, let's do one with Katya. Okay, Miss Katya. Okay. Camera. Uh, and I'm hip push. I'm hip, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm but I have to see what I look like. I know the camera's there, but I have to check me out. And hip push. Okay. Okay. So simple practice, simple practice, yeah. Uh, so I know they're thinking and they're gonna think about this and that's gonna happen, of course. But you you try to simplify it and whatever story you use, hey guys, settle down, begin to feel, whatever that means to them. Of course they'll think about feeling. And it won't quite be, you can push, you can push, I'm a big boy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, she was being too soft on me. Uh, I'm surprised Katja was being soft on me. Anyway, uh, and so of course they'll try to figure it out. And of course, when a little something happens, whoa, 
whoa, whoa, that took, whoa, that took much longer. Let me think about that. Of course they'll do that. It's your job to bring them back here. Tell them, I know you're thinking. I know you're impressed that you were able to stand longer, but don't do anything with it. Come back here with more feeling. Breathe. Settle. Oh, it goes, okay. Oh, geez, since I felt fuller. But she broke me. Well, of course, we're not perfect yet. A percentage game. So find your own stories. Find your own presentation. I show you my words. But you, you get the drift of what's going on. Uh, so the Chinese master was telling his people, clear. I might say, everybody, stop thinking. Feel. Stop thinking. Feel. Stop thinking. Feel. Uh, find your own words. Okay? Are we finished, Mike, or are you still on? Uh, no, um, that was great. Thank you, Sensei. Yeah. Uh, so I always, one of my claims to fame is uh, my breaking down things simple is pretty good. Okay. Uh, old Sensei dialogues, he liked the way I broke it down simpler. In many ways, he couldn't do that very well. Uh, but it's something that's sort of more natural for, for me. Simplify. I'm a mapper. I, I map things out. I'm very good at it. I got to be careful too much now. We'll get in my way of developing. <laughs> uh, I'll explain that another day. Uh, but uh, a disability of simplifying and breaking it down so somebody can start to catch it and keep it simple so they can move along with it. Uh, that's where things like, hey guys, it's a percentage game. At first, of course they're gonna push you over because your percentage is much more here. You got a little bit here. Now as you settle, whatever word you're gonna use, and breathe, and, oh, that was a bit better. Yes, because the percentage changed from less of this to a little bit more of this, maybe a 90, 10 or whatever, however you want to lay that out. Uh, and then after a bit, it's almost nothing and a hundred percent here. It's a percentage game. It's not done in one move. Okay. So you slowly introduce them. Thank you. Slowly introduce them to those patterns. Was they drooling? Okay, we got a minute here uh, before I move on a bit. Somebody? Questions, comments, problems? Sensei, this is Tija. Tija. All right. So it's, it, it's interesting, you know, this happens in music too. It's quite, uh, it is, it's not just a flip from one state to another it's a gradual process yeah you know so you 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 think of you you think about yeah. the music you hear the okay you, okay teacher saying you think about the music yeah okay go ahead and then it's 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 a gradual integration i could say of the embodiment of the music it doesn't happen right away you I'm know talking to teacher during the week and so we call this plunking. Yeah, you it's plunk a few notes, you plunk it? Yes, plunking. Okay. And, but your percentage is still very high here, but you're beginning to plunk. You're beginning, small percentage, but you're beginning to feel. Is yeah. that okay so far, Tisha? That's absolutely great. Yeah. So so it, it <laughs> moves through those through those levels before it's integration. So at first. Yeah. You're playing the phrases. You're playing a little bit of, of the phrases of the music. You're not yet playing music because music comes from this other place. Much fuller, fuller. level emanating, yeah. In the, in the map that you're using right now, it comes from that feeling brain. So I've had really great uh, teachers in master classes on music saying, yeah, when you go to perform, you, you, you can't think about the music. Does it, not wait, stop. Yeah. You can't think about the music. Da -da! Yeah, yeah. At that point, it's- yeah. you're either, If you think about the music, you're not 
here as a musician. There it is. Bing. Be because there's a transparency between, there's no difference at that stage between you and the music. You have become the music. Or we'd say, this guy is a student of music or something to make a word. Mm -hmm. This guy is a musician. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes in martial arts, we don't make that distinction enough. Uh, I'm an Aikidoist. No, you're a student of Aikido. You're not really an Aikidoist yet. Or you're not really a martial artist yet. You're studying martial arts, but you're not a martial artist. There it is. That's if, with some people, Marco Argus is a somebody who can do something. Oh, yes. <laughs> a yes. Studying it is fine, of course. But sometimes we use the words a little loosely. Yeah, yeah it might even be necessary as, as, a, as, a, as a starting point. Yeah, yeah. As long as uh, we all kind of know it's a starting point. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, is there anything else on the music, uh, TJ? Oh, that's, that's good. That's and it? I Oh, very good, thank you. Say who? Can I throw something in? I just yeah. thought the realm that we're talking, and Tisha, you would get this now, that in this world, they can program computers to play the notes that Bach or whoever wrote and to play them perfectly. But would you rather listen to that than a person? And if not, what is it that, that's different there? And I think we're talking about feeling. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, uh, sphere of influences, of course, energy, everything's energy, sphere of, and that carries along with, so it has a vitality. Oh, shouldn't use that word because I use it in a different area, but it has an aliveness of itself. Yeah. Yeah, I like, yeah. I, I like vitality. I, that, I think that's an important word. Yeah, I, I just keep that word separate. Uh, probably, no, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, since they're trying to, Get me to catch the difference between self and the alive energies of the stuff of creation, that great he, she stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, he used the word vitality for, for me, that, that self has its own vitality, which is different than the vibrational aliveness of energies. Just to make a distinction, it's important, not maybe important for you all right now, but anyway, that's why I want to be careful. How I use that word. Great. Thank you for that. Talking to myself. Uh, Since uh, this is Andreas. Yeah. About the same thing. I, I was watching a special on uh, quantum mechanics and uh, quantum, quantum physics, and they said if someone observes the experiment, it changes the outcome of that experiment. So it's kind of like similar to what you're saying. If once you start like getting involved with it, then you change in the nature of the outcome and of what it is that it is. Thank you. There was something we touched on. Let me see if I can jar myself here. Uh, words that we use. I had some notes about uh, the words that we use. Uh, I'm sort of blanking at the moment. Hang on a second, quick peek. Uh, words, words, proper words. Oh, I okay. <laughs> we touched on this uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think. Uh, that it would be nice in our study group, the Zoomers of Fridays, uh, to know that certain words uh, should come from certain places. I. Uh, pointed that out or made a joke about that a couple of weeks ago or something where I said, somebody's thinking, which is fine, it's fine to think. And, but they want to impress you. So instead of saying what well, my thoughts on it are, or my off the top is, they want to impress you and they say, my sense of it is, but they haven't come down here, but they've learned that word has a little more kick to it. So they use it here. It would be important for us if we're going to hang out and train together and stuff to try to be as best as we can, uh, a little clearer. I know we're going to screw that up. I sometimes say uh, I think when I really meant feel or something. But anyway, eventually we're really going to work together as a group. We have to establish a little better languaging. So if you say sense, 
then I trust here, oh, you're at the sense level place to some degree. Okay. Now, well, my sense is, blah, blah, blah. I think, who is this asshole? Okay. So uh, it would be nice uh, to clarify some words if we were working together better as a group so we'd understand where we're coming from. If a student, if I'm asking somebody to settle down more and the student says to me, uh, Sensei, I'm not quite, and okay, let's say I'm getting them to get to a feeling level, feeling brain. And they say to me, Sensei, I'm not quite there yet. Oh, okay. I know they're making an approach, but they haven't yet clicked into where the sphere is there. It hasn't really, yeah, I'm not here. Uh, that they're still making an approach. So they say, I'm not quite there yet. Oh, okay, thank you for being honest because that student could have bullshitted me. Well, I'm feeling this and that, Sensei, just trying to impress me or to cover their ass. Uh, but to say, I'm not quite there yet. Uh, or if they couldn't get there at all. But the after class, they say, Sensei, I couldn't get there at all because my grandmother just died and I was a little worried about her, her and her estate and what, whatever. I, I quite understand it. We'll pick it up in another class. Another day will come. Uh, so this moral honesty of where we're at, okay, uh, would be nice. Is that okay? Okay. So again, let's see. Okay. Uh, now the brains. Okay. To make it simpler for you, the brains already exist. You don't have to create the brains. You have to settle down to get to that level where that brain is, and it will activate. You touch it, it will activate. Okay? I tried to explain something to Noah the other day, and I, I, I used that, who's that knocking on me, Barrow? No, maybe all you old people can remember there was a child's program. And there was a barrel and a puppet in it. And somebody would knock on the barrel and the puppet would come up out of the barrel and say, who's that knocking on me barrel? And I, I don't know, for some reason that always struck me dumb, huh? But if I knock on this barrel, it comes alive, okay? So just to, uh, but anyway, just to know it's there. Now, yes, it has been dormant whatever the brains, they have been dormant, but they're there. As you settle in clear or settle in open, uh, that wakes them up from their dormancy, okay? They're enshrouded in some severe energy, but they're there and they'll wake up, okay? Is, is that all right? So that should simplify things. You're not trying to create it. I, I would think that would be damn hard. I wouldn't even know how to do that. You don't create it. You acknowledge it, you play with it, and it begins to show you it's there, okay? Now, as uh, whether you're at a feeling level or a sensing level, when it first begins to show you it's there, it might just be a little piece of something, at which time this brain will jump in and say, no, no, I made that up. Uh, since I mentioned that, that's why I, I picked that up. That's why I thought that. Uh, we're a killer on ourselves. We have words in English phrases. Uh, he's in his own way. Something tries to begin to happen and he goes, no. He's in his own way. It's trying to happen. But it doesn't compute in here. You see? Is that almost clear enough? Uh, we have other phrases. Uh, he's in his own way uh, or whatever but you get the sense of it, okay? okay. <laughs> so watch out for this guy because he's a nice guy, that brain, but he also has a lot of emphasis, potential. I know he's a nice guy, he's got a lot of nice stuff going on. He memorizes, he whatever, has memory, uh, whatever, whatever. But he's also a critiquer. He's also a bit of a worrier. Oh, can I trust that? Okay, so he's a fast critiquer, a fast worrier, should be another word there. Uh, doubter. He loves to doubt. So I, I use those sort of negative words. I know he's got some nice stuff going on, but I'm talking about the negative that stops you. 
from having these things come alive. This guy will quite often negate. Now, the problem is as these things first begin to happen, they're not maybe that clear, but there's a, a sense, if you would, of something. Gee, I'm just like they're uh, a canary. I thought I saw a pussy cat. Is that right? Why am I going through old oh, shit? I don't know. Uh, and, you know I, I thought that happened, but I may have made it up. I was like, who cares? Play the game. If you're interested, play it again. You can rerun things. Let me feel that what I felt a few minutes ago. Again, I'll settle and make room for it and let it let it show itself. Play the game. But this guy is hard pressed to play the game. So you got to learn to play the game and watch out for the doubter, the critiquer. He'll kill you along the way. He can stop you cold. So, which brings me up to a couple of stories. Uh, may have said some of these before, but in this context, <laughs> my students teaching a class at a mental institution in California here and uh, Aikido, but a lot of, we were doing a lot of settling, centering, and all that stuff around me. And he happened to mention something about energy. The lady psychiatrist on staff grabbed him and said, you got to talk to me after the session. He said, oh, started to talk after the session. And she says, tell me more about the energy. And then eventually he says to her, well, what's up? Well, she was seeing energy things, maybe some kind of aura stuff. But unfortunately, the mentally ill patients would also see that. You know, these are crazy people who are seeing these things, and she's seeing the same things. Scary. That might mean she's getting crazy, which also happens when you work in a mental institution. Some people flip over. <laughs> Now, here's a well-trained medical advanced person who doesn't know shit about auras or energy. Uh, so he explained a little bit, and I don't know what happened after. Uh, but, but to me, that's always been a shame. Somebody working with mentally ill people that doesn't know zilch about energies or flows or seeing auras. Or, oh, my God. That's a shame. Okay? But just how the eye... Her eye couldn't fit that sphere of influence thing into this realm. She must have been going freaky with that. So this realm is great, but it's limited. Okay. Right. Uh, that's why I think we have to be careful in certain words. Like, okay, everybody, I want you to be psychic. This realm will say, ah, psychic. I don't scare people in certain words. Okay. I'm trying the brain thing. This is really easy. You got a brain, you got a brain, you got a brain. It's okay. They're there. Just train. Train them. I just acknowledge them and play with them, which is training. Uh, another story. Sometimes a, a brain may activate uh, on its own, where you don't go searching for it. It's just out of the blue, suddenly shows it's there. That could happen, okay? Uh, out of the blues, boom. So my friend in Vancouver, a group of psychics up there, uh, she was 40, no, about 50 years old. Suddenly, boom, she's seeing auras. And she continued finer and finer in that sphere of influence. Uh, uh, within a few months, she was really sharp in, in that field, we'd say she's really okay. Like she was really good there, but it came out of nowhere. She didn't train. It just uh, when her married life was over and, and the kids are out of college and whatever, suddenly, boom, this thing just was there. So that's possible. Uh, but don't, some of you are maybe lazy. Okay, I'm waiting for it to come alive on its own. Don't go there. But if it happens, don't be shocked. So the lady at Esalen. We're doing, I think, past life views. We've got a guy sitting up front, settled, open. We're practicing looking at him through him, trying to see past lives, training him to, to sense the. And, and I'm starting to see a little bit, a little costume change, a little facial change, but nothing special yet. Suddenly, this lady screams, 
Well, apparently she saw in a flash this guy full of clothes in that costume of that era, being clear as a bell. And it just shocked the hell out of her. She screamed. So I shoot on her about screaming and disturbing clowns. But anyway, uh, but this, see, this was her first realization that she had that brain that had that area of expertise or sphere of influence. She didn't know she had it. Uh, all I did was settle them down and say, easy the eyes, let's, let's let her look. <laughs> easy, settle down. Ah, stuff like that. And boom, she hit it and it suddenly showed that it was there. Okay. Uh, but it freaked her out because she didn't know it was there. This is another lady that very fast became a very good, for lack of words, psychic. Uh, she lived in my cinemas for, let's forget, a year or something. And she developed quite well. Oh, so surprise, Ellen. Got a few other stories. Ah, you got another couple minutes, don't we? Hang on a sec. Oh, how we block things out, out, and we might not block, our families may block out. So this story of uh, oh, the same lady in Vancouver, or a seer, she's in a bus, a little child, uh, four years old, uh, in the seat in front, leans over and looks at my friend, and not just looks at my friend, but does that sort of look around like an Aurora or might do, uh, and says, oh, what pretty colors. So my friend said, realizes that she's seeing auras and says to her mother, oh, your daughter can see. And the mother, no, we got to get off the bus because I got to talk to you. Okay, in this Chinese family, the females of the family, apparently for some generations had had this capability, but it was, not allowed. We don't want to hear this. You're not going to talk about it. It's not allowed. So she got a couple of few generations of that. Suddenly, here's her little daughter, boom, talking about this. Okay. Uh, so it could be crushed by your family or society uh, or by your smaller eye that can't conceive of spheres of influence that are finer dimensions. Okay, so um, something there. That we had up our time already. Uh, what I miss, what I miss. Uh, so to shift, use the calm words, settle, easy, clear, whatever words you like. But it's, it's uh, they're based on the calm effect great call then boom okay so downtime is a great call but there should be if you go deeper and deeper boom another level of you that can cope okay we talked about this in the first couple of sessions we did that corona is a downtime thing it's forcing you down some people are getting very tired because they they can't go down into an even finer. So they're starting to feel the pressure, starting to say things like, I can't take this anymore. Okay. But now and then I heard somebody today say, I'm really getting to like this. <laughs> well, it depends what they're doing with the downtime. But uh, anyway, that's an outside pressure or downtime. The purpose, there is a better you character that will be better able to cope. Okay, so that's a basic law. I wouldn't go around on that another day. It's been quite a while since we talked about it. Uh, I don't know, last, last couple of minutes. Somebody? what I miss, Brad? Papa Who that? Somebody? Vianney, we can't hear you. Can't hear me. We can hear you fine, Sensei. Thank you. Oh, okay. Whoever was talking, we can't hear you. Was that VNA talking? No. Why is VNA's face on my TV? Well, I thought he, he was talking. Oh. Well, he waved, but I don't didn't hear anything. Uh, I, I got a bunch of notes, and I probably didn't cover half of what I wanted to cover. Uh, 
So, well, I, I just add in, I thought that the, um, the layout in terms of your initial thing about the words, and then again, about uh, the ability to develop, you know, that saying in Japanese, say one word, here, 10 words or something. Uh, just that these concepts really can't be held inside of a word. But I think the distinction between the two locations, and I'm going to kind of ask out loud here, is probably pretty clear for everyone. Yeah, they have a different flavor. They're really quite distinct. Uh, you know, if I get to my normal brain and looking around, um, at that time, I'm not going to really say I'm a great Aikidoist or what, whatever. I'm, I'm pretty heavy in here. Okay. Something about it I recognize. I recognize by what catches my attention and whatever, or its thought patterns. The feeling one is quite different. It's calmer, for example. It's more settled, for example. Mm. I'm beginning to feel my body. I can feel my feet on the floor now, a little tingle in my knees. Uh, the body is starting to feel itself more and the, the hum within that body is starting to straighten. The body's trying to correct itself because it has a little more freedom of room. Uh, so that's very distinct from this guy. Okay. And then as you continue into a fuller body, feeling, brain, realm of influence, feeling, and continue uh, fuller there, and continue into a sense feeling before we get the sensing. Go ahead and sense feeling has a different flavor to it. So they are quite distinct if you hang out and I don't know, experience them. If you just think about them, you won't quite catch that difference. If you sense feel, sense feel, if you soak, I'd say soak in on something, uh, they're quite distinct. Okay. I know I'm at a pretty good body feeling place because since I moved my hand, they were glowing. The palm suddenly was a beaming. I feel like a Catholic saint. Okay. And this flow is already there. So if you said to me, where are you now, Nado? A fair feeling place. All I know because that's what happens when I'm at a feeling place. It lights up. It feels longer than I know my arm is. I know my arm stops here, but it feels like way out there. And that tells me I'm on a certain level of feeling. That's the, that's the sphere of influence of the first parts of it. Could be better degrees of the feeling brain sphere of influence. Uh, <clears throat> that's where we also play a percentage game. Uh, but after a while, uh, that will move into finer. We change the name, sense feeling. After a while, sense feeling will move into a finer that we're going to call sensing. Okay. Uh, we tried to bring this up a few weeks ago or something where I talked about uh, realizing people were missing something because they had to look at the movement before they could react. And I thought, well, that's lousy martial arts. So we had them blindfold. You used to do a lot of blindfold. And at first, you're blindfolded and your arm is out. And they push your arm and you move with them. At first, it was a little raggedy ass. Mm, yeah. But after a bit, blindfolded, they touch you and you're right in the groove with them. And then I mentioned Noah. So we're following that pattern. And uh, then we want to move along, have the arm out. And the person's way back yonder. Uh, and he's quietly starting to make his move. You can't hear a clomp, clomp, clomp. He's quietly making a move. Uh, sort of showing the rest of us who are watching uh, the angle he's coming in on. And then using Noah, for example, because he was uh, first of my group. Uh, in sense feeling, he started to move before the guy grabbed perfectly in the groove. I thought, yeah, that's how it So that was a sense feeling or sense feeling going into sensing. Because you're moving properly without feeling. So I call that sense feeling. Okay. After a while and more sensing, maybe he could sense uh, uh, somebody, a friend of his across the country is trying to get a hold of him. 
<laughs> call him and the guy say, I was just about ready to pick up the phone. What was that about? <laughs> okay, sensing. Uh, so anyway, when things first appear as you play or they happen naturally out of nowhere, uh, watch out for that first brain. It'll question, it'll doubt, uh, and we, we're our worst enemy. We're in our own way. Uh, play the game, not gonna cost you anything. Don't bet the market at first. Don't, don't. If you're a surgeon, don't say, yeah, I got this, whatever, and I'll try this. Not, not at first. Do something simpler to really establish that place. And then when you've established that place and you're really confident because it's showing in your tennis game, it's showing in whatever, 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 then be in that place and operate and see if it's not better. But not the, not the first day. <laughs> okay. Uh, play, get comfortable. So I say, uh, first of all, tourists, you're entering someplace new and you're a tourist and you're sort of looking around. As you hang out there longer, hang out there longer, uh, maybe you'll get a green card. You're, you're allowed to stay there. You have a little position. And, and longer, you're a citizen. And all the foreigners would say, I am an American now. Uh, so that's a stump example I use of first entering something or entering something. Uh, you're still a visitor. You're not sure why they're doing that and what they're saying and what they're eating. And of course. But as you hang out, it gets clearer. Okay. So I think enough for tonight. We're running out of time. Anything before we bow out? No, that's great. I have one I, thing. Can I just one say, thing? This is Who this is Amy. This is Amy. Say, Florida Amy? Yeah, local Amy. <laughs> oh, local Amy. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I was going to ask Amy before. I thought she said to me something about her mother. Her mother was sensitive. One, yes. Another word we use was sensitive. But sensitive Amy didn't give me any more I... feedback. Did you want to say anything more about that before I hear what you want to talk about? Um, Where was your mother sensitive? How was she sensitive? She, sensitive? Like things could come through her. It It, it was almost like things... Things she had like she knew i would call or something before i called or she could Early just sensitivity okay yeah she had a sense of kind of what wasn't there what wasn't present i don't know not very clear amy but i'll let it go That's for now clear. what we what did you want to talk about see young um, girls ignore their mothers <laughs> right you learn from my mom how do you do that <laughs> i'll go um, ahead what do you well, she's not quite that way now, but that's a different story. Um, anyway, I tend to know that I'm in that sense feeling brain space when I can see from that space rather than observing it. Like often I don't always know it, but there's a point where I, I realize, oh, I'm looking at it from up here rather than being in it and seeing like my hips are yeah. actually have eyes. Or something. Yeah. The game I used to play, Amy, right around in there in the early days of Mountain View, so I'm fairly recent. But I thought make believe I had a, a, a spotlight, a headlight mm -hmm. there. And I would practice walking around the dojo of feeling this beam beaming as if I had a headlight there. Mm. Just to start to try to bring that area alive. So that's a dumb game I used to play. Mm. Okay. Another one to establish center, I used to put a Joe on my back too, through my belt, and that stick would be like that. I'd practice walking around as, as if it repped for center. I'd play these dumb games, but mm. go ahead, you had anything? Well, it's, you've mentioned this before, where the ex having the experience of it, really experiencing it rather than observing it. Yeah. It's a, that, that experiential place, sometimes, even that that brain space, it's like it, it, um, you can feel it, but you're not experiencing it. And I think that that experiencing part is really important. Yeah. So some students might say, uh, uh, you know, simple move here, might say, uh, say, say, let me feel that. 
Mm. Let me feel it. Mm. As opposed to, not wrong, but a sensei, would you do one? I want to look. That's okay. It's, but it also hints at a different level, potentially, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. But let me feel that. So, mm. so that helps me be here in this feeling level. Mm -hmm. no difference of tonality or something. Again, how maybe one day we should be a little more careful how we use the words, what we mean, where we're coming from. Just communicate with each other. Mm. I think I'm finished, Amy. Okay, me too. Thanks. Okay. Everybody, thank you. Hope you got something out of this. Thank you very much, Snedo Andy. Sensei. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you, Sensei. Hey, thank remember, you. an octopus has that. nine brains. Damn it, we ought to be better than an octopus. Thank you all. Just a quick note of thanks to Kenneth for fixing the sound. That was great. We take it for granted. Thanks for fixing the sound. Yeah, great thank crew. You. Thanks, Lauren. Good picture, Amy. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, thank you very much. Sensei and everyone. Don't forget to vote. Thank oh, you. What do you have? Thank you, Sensei. <laughs> Thanks, Sensei. Great session. Thanks, Sensei. Miss you a lot. See you later.